Wow. Well, I am going to introduce Anyana Clark, and we've known each other for several years now. I've, we've had a, um, an interview before in the past. I invited her back on um, because she's so interesting and, and uh, yeah, we always have fascinating conversations. And we started this conversation, this podcast recording late because we got so involved in other things. Um, but it's, we brought it into this as well. And I'm going to introduce you, Sinyana. You are a holistic coach and energy worker extraordinaire. Please tell the audience more about you, Sinyana. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks for having me back. And as you say, we do have the best conversations, actually. Um, so I've been a holistic therapist and coach for 22 years, and I focused on working with people with anxiety, mainly adults with anxiety and bringing transformation into their life. Um, as a Reiki master, which I've been for over 20 years, I've been fascinated by energy work and how it underpins a lot of what we experience in our daily life. And over the last three years, I've really been deepening my understanding of that through my work with connecting with my higher self. Um, and I'll, I'll explain that more if you want, but it's changed how I view the world, how I view interactions between individuals, and uh, even how I view death. It's, it's just such a fascinating subject, energy work, and it's like a giant, giant uh, rabbit hole you could go down and take ages for, to emerge from, so yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, yeah, we, we, we've talked briefly about that beforehand. And I think there is, it is interesting, isn't it? And as you say, we are made up of energy uh, as humans. And I think we forget that at times. We, um, we, are, we are, everything we see, everything we perceive, including ourselves, are all made up of energy. Quantum physics has already confirmed that. We are not separate from our environment. We're not separate from our pets and our animals. We're all interconnected. We can see that through climate change, how we have affected our, our own planet, right? And yeah. equally, we can see how our planet responds when we treat it well, when we plant trees. You see these wonderful stories of some couple buying land up in the Amazon and over 20 years turning it from a kind of dead area into a place full of trees and birds and all sorts of other things and there's been cases of that in India as well so we know that the world will respond to us and it's kind of like a a living example of how intertwined we are with our own environment and so if you take energy the way I like to talk to people about energy is in a very grounded way because I want it to become accessible to everybody mm. And I would love everyone to be their own energy worker. In our previous chat, I talked about be your own detective. Now my slogan is be your own energy worker. So because you have the capacity and ability to manage your own energy and help influence your own environment and the people and animals and trees and plants and gardens, everything within your environment, we all have influence. And that's mm. true. Sadly, we're not, that isn't promoted, especially through the media, is it? Yeah. No. Mm. We're almost, I mean, I, I, as I said earlier, I, I don't watch the news. I find it depressing. I don't want to be depressed. Um, but if I look just at the headlines uh, on my on my phone, and every piece of news is sensationally bad news. Um, even when we talk, we just talked about the energy crisis, and it just is gloom and doom, and we're all going to freeze to death. We're all going to starve to death. We have nothing within our own power. We are powerless. That's what we're told. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, but we're not. We're no. not. No. Absolutely not. We will find ways around this. We always have done. We've survived. And it just is the fact that, yeah, it brings our energy levels down so much. It does. You know, um, there are things you can do that will influence how you feel. Um, and they're really simple things that many of us will have heard of, like be careful what you watch, what you consume in terms of 
reading, um, watching TV, etc. Um, I've got a teenager and sometimes I have to say to him, you know what you see on one of these medical programs, that's not real life. That's not how you talk to people in life. I found he was talking to me as if I was, you know, part of a medical. And I was like, I'm your mother. Remember that we're not. There's a distinction between what you're seeing on the screen and real life. Um, so that's one way. Another way is how much time do you spend indoors? Do you get outdoors at all? Do you fill your senses? Do you allow the wind to touch your face and get cold, right? That has a biological influence on your body, right? There's a physiological influence from seeing all the green. When I look out my window, I've got about 10 shades of green from trees, you know, even though I'm in on the edge of London. Um, that has a huge impact on my mental, how I feel mentally and my mental landscape. So there are lots of little things you can do to affect and improve how you feel and how it will uplift you and make you feel better energetically. And when you feel better, you're more motivated. You get on with those tasks that never seem to get done. You want to socialise. You want to be within your community being active. So energy underpins everything. And you, if you can start to ignore the narrative, we talked about this a bit earlier, ignore the narrative and start asking better questions, right? Mm. So a simple question is, why do I choose to eat the processed food rather than have a go at making something simple that's not processed? such a small change but it can make such a critical difference to you uh, a year ago I went vegetarian um, and I can't say initially it was a love affair I mean I love liked vegetables but I also quite liked sausages and chicken etc but it clearly wasn't suiting my body and so when I went vegetarian I decided to do it on a month by month basis until I felt I was ready to commit to it right and I began to ask myself, OK, how can I make this a better experience for myself? How can I enjoy it more? So those are the types of questions you can ask yourself. You don't need anyone else to tell you or ask you those questions. Um, so ask yourself, what can I do to make something feel better in the moment? How can I choose something different? So what's in my way that's making me stop some, choosing something different? Or something like, what tweak can I make that will make me want to do the thing that I've been avoiding? So, yeah, I, I, I'm so with you because I think <clears throat> the clients I work with, and I'm sure you have the same, same experience, is that people just feel so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's so big and it's scary mm -hmm. because the thought of making changes or doing something different is very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is, one, it's so overwhelming that they shrink from it and they will distract themselves with mm -hmm. things that aren't helping them, mm -hmm. like retail therapy, watching crap on television, um, yeah, eating rubbish food, or whatever. They will go that place because they think that will help them feel mm -hmm. better instead of, OK, I don't like the way I feel, but I'm going to have to take small steps. Mm -hmm. I can't deal with it all in one big picture. Mm -hmm. It's going to be uncomfortable. OK, it's uncomfortable, but are you comfortable now? And that is the brilliant question. Are you comfortable now? Are you happy now? Do you feel like life is what you thought it would be like at whatever age you are? Are you feeling heard, seen, authentic? Mm -hmm. Are you being honest with yourself? Now, these are quite deep questions. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, you may not want to ask such deep questions by yourself. And that's why that you come and see yourself or me. But you can empower yourself on a small tiny basis daily choose to go for that walk even if it's raining just get out of the house choose to make a simple pasta dish rather than buying a ready-made meal choose to turn the telly off put your 
radio on or your music on and dance like a loon like no one's watching in your living room to get your energy up you know these are little changes and you might some people might scoff at them because they seem so simple but they empower you because we learn through experience you know the way the brain works is it has a store of your experiences and how they made you feel. So if as a child you love twirling around in your little tutu and it made you feel fantastic, twirl around now because your brain will remember that made us feel fantastic, right? Yeah. Little changes create big results. You don't have to make, you know, you don't have to check your family out of the house, sell the house, move to the country, become a barefoot mama in order to create change. No, you can make little, little small changes empower yourself that way and then you're ready to tackle deeper stuff and it's also as we said earlier about reframing change change can be scary we know that but how about reframing it as an opportunity to explore something new and if you can reframe it that way you allow yourself to make mistakes and you allow yourself to refocus to step back and take a deep breath and kind of go um don't think that was quite what I intended now is what's happened is that good or is that bad do I like it do I not like it mm. or can I change it to let's try something else mm. right um, as business owners we experience this quite a lot you know am I happy with how I'm serving my clients are my clients the sort of clients I want to work with is it uh, Am I happy with how I deliver my work? Do I need to deliver it in a different way? Do I need to write a book, not write a book? Be on a podcast, not be on a podcast? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Do I need to go and get presentation skill training to be better on a podcast? That change is something we experience as business owners a lot. Yeah. But I think I agree with you that we are, yeah, ever-changing, as you say, with our services or the way we're working or our clients or we have to with the with the economic climate or even over covid we i was already working on zoom some of the time but all my work went onto zoom or telephone mm. it was adapting to change mm -hmm. and people were adapting to change because i don't like zoom and then they were going oh actually if this <laughs> is the only way i'm going to get help then i have to go and do so it is it is that adapting to change and i I often say to people, you don't like change, but you are changing every single day. Even if you come to, um, if you're, you're driving down the road and the road is closed, you've got to do make a decision on what you can do. You can sit there and say, oh, well, I can sit here and wait till the road opens, mm. but that could be months, years, or I can actually make a detour. Okay, that detour means I've got to go down a road I don't recognize. It's not one I know. However, I can make that change. I can do that and get to my destination. I love and that I, energy. Brilliant. <laughs> love it. Uh, and I, I just think, well, why, why do we have that view that we can't change? It's scary. Yeah, but isn't it exciting? I think, and, you know, and I think that's where I find a lot, Signora. I, you know I'm quite adventurous. I love travel and I've been away on holiday. And I go on holiday on my own. Um, yes, I went this time to somewhere I've been before, but there were things that were different about it. But I love that. You know, it wasn't exactly the same. There were differences. Mm -hmm. And that just left me feeling that this is exciting. What's different about it? Mm -hmm. And and that in, actually energizes me. That's the difference for me mm -hmm. is I become energized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what can I do differently? What can I, how can, yes, I was on my own. Um, I could spend the whole time thinking, oh, I'm so miserable, I've got no one to talk to, but I didn't. I went and sought out, I go and talk to the shopkeeper, go and talk to my hostess, I go and talk to the people in the restaurant. Um, that's me if I want to seek out company because. Otherwise, I could sit there and go, oh, I'm all on my own. There's yeah. nobody around. I'm miserable. Oh, nobody cares about me, et cetera. But I don't. I go, okay, let me have a go at this. I'm just going to say, hello, how are you? How, what time do you open? Have you got this? Have you got that? Language is 
I can't speak, my Greek is crap. Their, 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 um, their English was, yeah, it was stilted, but we got there. Yeah. It's just nice to talk to different people. So here's the thing about change. And I'm going to talk about this in terms of society rather than on the individual basis, because we've been talking about the individual basis till now. Yeah. But if you think about change on a societal basis, change is problematical. Conformity mm. is better. Because if everyone conforms and stays in their boxes and does what they're supposed to, then they are more manageable. But if you have a population that keeps going off a bit like balls in different directions, how do you manage that society, right? So yeah. if you think about it from a political perspective, or if you, when we had uh, monarchies that were more active, not just constitutional monarchies, but monarchies that actually rule countries, conformity worked. Conformity created social strata. Conformity yeah. created you know, in the time when, you know, Mr. Smith was actually the blacksmith and his son was always going to be a blacksmith and the miller's son was always going to be a miller, etc. That's all conformity. Now, those stru structures have been breaking down very so slowly, but consistently since the Second World War. OK, we are at a point now in our history where feminine energy is rising, where so women aren't accepting a secondary position to men mm. men are facing an identity of crisis a crisis identity identity crisis that's the word identity crisis can't talk today uh children are feeling disconnection and understanding that what we as adults have been modeling is not what they really want but because they don't have experience of life they don't know what they really want right mm. And then we have our press and political stratas who are trying to take us back, back to a time when everything was simple and conformed. It was conformity was there, right? So you have this push-pull going on in society at the moment, which is why we're experiencing so much change, so much. It feels like, um, you know, at the sea where the waves are just turning over, it feels a bit like that's constantly changing. It's big change, it's hard change. It's affecting our purse. It's affecting how we're going to live. It's really hard. But actually, it's a call to, for something different. Where society as a whole is asking for something different. And that's what we're birthing currently. And that's why it feels hard. Labour is hard, right? Yes. It can be hard, especially if you have some of the population resisting it. Which, again, we, we talked briefly about this before we started the podcast, didn't we? The fact that there's this call for instant gratification and that sense of that's what's missing. That's what I need. I need, I need my reward system in my brain to be fired up. But we're looking in a direction, or a lot of people are looking in a direction, of instant gratification. Retail therapy, I can have that, and I want it, and I want it now. Um that you can yes i mean television you can have any channel you want you can watch anything you want you can get anything you want mm -hmm. you can buy anything you want and your sense is that that is what i want that's what's going to fill me up and make me feel good and happy yeah but that's that isn't it no and i think that's the misinterpretation of what we want right we because technology in the 80s, sort of late 70s, early 80s, leapt forward in the, it, the way it did. And the way our brains are wired is anything new must be magical, amazing. And we've kind of taken it a bit to an extreme. Mm. I, th I think what most people crave, and I think it's unconscious rather than conscious, is a desire for connection. And the mental health crisis we see going on now is a direct reflection of that lack of feeling of connection. And by connection, I mean authentic connection. Yeah, and I would, I would so agree with you on this because we are social beings. Mm -hmm. We need others around us. We know that you can die if you don't have physical mm -hmm. connection. That's a fact, we know it. 
And yet what we've got is a society, and it's probably what is going, what is going further than here, of fear of connection. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to that person. They could be a murderer, a rapist, a terrorist. They're dangerous. And I said this more recently, literally traveling, because when I started traveling on my own decades ago, but I would meet people. I'd meet someone at the airport and have a conversation. There's an English guy who uh, I sat down at the table. He said, oh, I'm sitting there. Oh, I'm sorry, did I take your seat? We got into conversation. He was a teacher in Japan. If you ever come to Japan, let me know. I'll, I'll let you know where to stay. Those conversations came up either uh, five minutes, an hour, a day, a week. I, it could be any time, but I'm noticing more Sanyana that people are fearful of connecting. Mm -hmm. I, I'm finding it a lot harder to have those off the cuff conversations. Yeah, yeah. Because we're we're being told that the world is a fearful place, and yet we're craving connection. We were deprived of it during COVID. COVID, yeah. And therefore, people are even more fearful. But if I if I connect with somebody, that means I could get COVID. Mm -hmm. so we've got this as you say there's this whole kind of thing yeah. going on and there's also the message that the best way to connect is through your tv screen or your monitor right yeah in person so here's the thing you can develop authentic intimate relationships with people on your screen you can yeah but what takes it to a new level is to be in their physical presence because what you cannot feel through a screen is someone else's energy. Yeah. You get a sense of who they are. Now you and I have met a couple of times and it's been, I've always really enjoyed that interaction with you because I, I feel like we reciprocate in how we feel when we meet, right? You, you can get that with someone I think, you know, well off a screen, but even then it's dulled. It's dull. It's kind of, it's, like the it's definitely the second best, isn't it? It's better second. than not having any connection. And I do pick up people's energies through a screen. I can't, I do, it, like I, I interviewed quite a lot of people, as you know, over the years. And there are people where I feel I can't, I'm finding it hard to connect with that person. Yes. And there are others where I immediately, wow, yeah, I pick up on their energy. So it yes. is there. But as you say, it's dulled. It would be so much better if I could have met that person face to face. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think one of the things we need to start doing, I, as I said to you before we came on air, I think there is an unconscious call amongst millions of people now for life to be slightly slower, simpler, to feel this connection to another person it doesn't have to be to hundreds of people it could just be to one or two people where you feel like you have a deep connection where you feel heard and seen you feel authentic in those relationships you can be truthful in those relationships and show up as all of yourself there's no hidden parts because that person they may not like all your parts, but they're not going to judge you and say you're not worthy on that basis of the bit of you that they don't like. And we live in a society where that kind of instant judgment has really been encouraged. It is our work as individuals, I believe, and this is how you change societies one by one, is each of us kind of going, OK, how can I show up in a more authentic way? How can I be? A, the best version of me I read recently um, something that I thought was really interesting it was talking about married couples and they or couples who people are in relationships basically and it said your responsibility is to be the best version of yourself and his responsibility or her responsibility is to be the best version of him or herself it is not your job to make them the best version of themselves and I loved that because this is about taking personal responsibility mm. for who you are as an individual. We, mm. everyone, I think pretty much everyone has experienced some kind of trauma in their life. Mm. But how you choose to respond to it is your choice. You can either go, I'm a victim, it all happened to me and I'm trapped. Mm. Or after a while, you can go, OK, this happened. This was really awful, shitty. and I hate it. But I'm going to stop responding in the same way as I used to. Yeah. Um, 
start responding in a different way. Yeah. And, I, and the example I gave Wendy off air was, and I referenced, my dad died very unexpectedly 11 years ago. And it was truly the most awful experience of my life. And for the first six months, I was lost in a haze of depression and just like, what the hell has just happened? How has my life imploded like this with my dad's death? But 11 years on, I can see in some ways it's been the biggest catalyst for change in my life. It gave me a freedom I didn't even know I was missing. And I had a fabulous, I had a great relationship with my dad. I was really close to him. And, but the energy shift that happened when he passed, and it took me a while to recognize it. It took me a while to start changing it uh, and my response to it has been just remarkable in my eyes right for me as an individual uh -huh. right so you have to think how can I take responsibility for what has happened to me and how can I change my response because you have control of that response no one else does exactly exactly control of that so this is how we change society one by one we but it is about taking that responsibility yeah and yeah. responsibility for ourselves yeah. and not expecting somebody else to fix us yeah that is so often what I see with couples who are in trouble mm -hmm. they're expecting the other person to fix their wounds mm -hmm. but it is they can't because they've yeah. got their own yeah and, and it's too and, much pressure on that relationship it's too much pressure you can't if you expect your partner to fix you, you mm. essentially drain it of its life force and energy. Yeah. You, you, you make it tired. You make your relationship tired. You, you, you kind of end up going, this is too hard. Mm. I, can't, I can't laugh with this person. I have no joy with this person. Instead, it's hard work and it's grinding. And I'm anxious because I don't know how they're going to show up. And I'm anxious because I don't know what they'll need from me. That's exhausting. Absolutely. Why would you do that to someone else, right? Take responsibility. For, and I know I say take responsibility and someone's probably going to be listening going, well, it's easy for her to say she's a holistic coach, right? <laughs> but the thing is, I'm human too. And I've made mistakes yeah. in my relationships and you know I've been married a long time and I'm still figuring it out we're just new empty nesters so now we've got to renegotiate our relationship and things that you can hide behind children drama you can't hide anymore they're open they're out there you've got to deal with them right absolutely yeah 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 I it, that's it you, you're so right and people yeah they have that view that oh well if you're a therapist you've got it sorted but we haven't yeah. uh you know and and I all of that you're so right and I still I would say you know I started this journey of self-discovery if you like yeah. right, I call it I started it oh, over 20 years ago now yeah. and I'm still learning about myself mm -hmm. and when something happens or I react or I'm triggered or I get a feeling I've learned I've learned over the years I've got to stop and explore this and uh, you know be our own detective I love yeah. that told you I, I use that a lot now but I am I'm my own detective what's going on what's happened why am I triggered by that it's not going to be that event that's triggered mm -hmm. me it's something back in my childhood or a, 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 an earlier life the way I responded or the way I felt I had to behave or whatever it was but I can feel it in my body and how many people just stop and sit with yeah. themselves and just allow that because what they do is they react mm. they get angry or upset and then don't get curious what's going on now mm. and if only we did more of that if each of us did more of that what is happening to me why am I feeling this way you know okay I'm reacting because of somebody the way someone's spoken to me but is that what I'm reacting to or is it my small child yeah. who was reacting as a result of the way I was spoken to yeah. by my father, for example? And that's what that's what we're missing so much of.
So one of the changes, um, energies in, in the spirit of energy of change that I think we need as a society is our ability to ask these better questions. So some of that is taught by your parents, some of that is taught in education at school, but some of it you have to just teach yourself, right? Yeah. And through asking those questions, you change how you parent your own children or how you interact with your siblings or your your parents, you might change your work as a result of asking those questions. So, for example, the cliche of Asian families is your children will be doctors, pharmacists, lawyers or accountants. Right. That was the except. Those are the acceptable professions. Um, I went to university and did economics and accountancy. Right. And with the idea that I would be an accountant, I came out of university and was like, I'm never going to be an accountant. It's just so far from who I am. You see Asian comedians coming up, but, you know, from the subcontinent, those people are change breakers. They have broken change because the mode, their parents would have been really like, oh, my God, this is not a safe profession. How are you going to support yourself? And yet these people have decided to break the mold because they've asked themselves the question, if I do what they want, how is that making me feel? If I do what I want, do I have faith in myself? Do I have faith in my abilities? If I do, how am I, am I going to be able to do this? Am I willing to give myself the chance to do this? They have taken those, asked those questions of themselves, right? And they might have done it unconsciously, but they still asked those questions. And they've ended up with a feeling of such confidence and sureness and hope that they're going to be successful that they've said to their parents I cannot compromise on what you're asking but they're a really good example of asking better questions yeah of yourself yeah exactly so yes we have got real change coming ahead of us haven't we yeah and yeah, yeah. Um, real changes we with the energy crisis and everything else that we're told about which is all a bit still unknown. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of worldwide issues going on that always have been and always will continue. Mm -hmm. um, we seem to forget that we live in this bubble that what's going here and in the States, we don't really know or get involved very much in the news as to what's going on worldwide, mm -hmm. but it's ever changing. There's, there are a lot of things going on, but we have in our own lives, as you said, we have an opportunity to make changes, to build our energy, that positive energy. And I think that's the one thing I think is so important that you've been talking about is that we have the ability to change and create more positive energies within yeah. us. And, and also, I would say, don't expect to be 100 percent positive all of the time, because that's not human either. Right. We all have days where you wake up and you're like, oh, I just want to go back to bed. We all have days like that. You'll have days where someone driving will annoy you, right? Or And it will put you in a bad mood. That's okay. That's being human. But what you want to aim for is like 60 to 80% of the time you are being authentic to yourself and you are building that positive energy through the choices you make. And I'm going to give you a really simple but... I found a hilarious example of someone changing how they reacted to something. I was on a training course many years ago and the instructor was talking about how the body can sometimes struggle to change because we sit in the same way, we walk in the same way. And so muscles and fascia will tighten up. And she said, here's a really simple example for change. She said, I was on the roundabout and uh, driving my car and this guy was really tooting me and honking me because he clearly thought that I'd done something wrong. And she said, I, I was feeling a bit flustered. And then I looked down and I picked up the first thing in front of me. And it was one of those joke glasses with a fake nose and a moustache. She popped it on and waved at this chap who burst out laughing and drove away. Right now, obviously, we don't all have jokey glasses, but feel free to go and buy them. But it was a really quick and simple way of creating change. She changed her reaction from fear to something funny. And she changed his reaction from anger. And he burst out laughing. So he clearly dissipated his rage. And he went on. So when he tells that story later in the day, 
it's not going to be that effing driver. It will be, I had the funniest experience today. This person cut me up and I was really annoyed, but then they did this. And honestly, it just made my day. There's a perfect example of generating positive change within yourself, right? We are energetic beings. Whatever we experience, we store in our bodies. If you can start storing positive change as opposed to negative change, and by negative, I mean sadness, doom, gloom, not forgiving people, uh, being angry with yourself, being mentally critical of yourself constantly, bashing yourself for every small mistake, being a perfectionist of yourself. These store low vibrations in your body, right? If you keep storing low vibration, you end up with disease. You end up with physical illness. And a book I'm going to recommend to anyone listening, if they it's an oldie but a goodie is You Can Heal Your Life, is one book by Louise Hay. And the other book I'm going to recommend is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. Both classic books, but they talk about the power of respons- self-responsibility, the power of taking charge of your circumstances and then taking action and in that taking of action you realize oh I'm not stuck I'm not trapped I have a choice I have hope I can make Mm -hmm. it better it might take me a while but I can make it better I can be a better version of myself and not everyone's going to like the better version of you some people in your family or friend circle will be like well, who do you think you are? But you won't care because you like the better version of yourself, right? And that's the power of energy. It works on the background, but when you harness it and you harness it for your own good, mm. it will just drive you forward. Mm. It's, yeah, like well, I said, anyone can be an energy, their own energy worker. Yes. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today, as always. It's yeah. always fascinating. Thank you so much for being a, a guest Very today, Zinjana. What's the easiest way of people getting in touch with you? Uh, so they can either get in touch. My current website is down. Um, I am in the process of launching something new called Energetics Every Day, and it's helping people to wield energy daily. Um, but at the moment, the easiest way is probably through my email. It's info at feelgoodtreatments.co.uk which was my old email address it will be switching soon um but that's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me at the moment and um yeah I'm really happy to have a conversation I do have a group on Facebook called the higher self connection collective and this is for people who are interested in connecting with their higher self and as I explained to you your higher self is the non-physical aspect of you who can give you lots of guidance and advice and help in how to move forward and I teach people how to do that um and that's on Facebook that group oh brilliant Uh thank you again you're very Uh, welcome um, love the conversation as ever yeah me too okay thank you